Well, this wreckage that we're living in here um, is from a big storm that came in last night. And, uh, oh, here comes Bubba. Come on. <laughs> Where's she? She's tied up outside. Oh. Anyways, this uh, this wreckage in here is from this big storm that blew in last night, and uh, chaos. Uh, yeah, the the wind or the I'm sorry, the rain. The rain wasn't bad. Yeah. But the wind picked up, and uh, I uh, I had been up in the little kitchen making dinner, and I came down to give Bubba some more food, and uh, he was laying spread eagled in the tent trying to hold it down. <laughs> Trying to call her. <laughs> Get down here, we need you. I wish I'd had some video of that, but that mm -hmm. wasn't really the time. So, but he was literally making himself as big as he could trying to hold that tent down. Yeah, it. Uh, if you walk around here, there's stuff blowed over. Guy next, not just just right out here. All of his stuff is just blowed everywhere. There's garbage cans blowed everywhere. We it's, did what we could, and we. I, I mean, we we made out pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Burned it up and pulled stakes real quick. Ran to a cabin that they had available. Yeah. Um, they said the winds, I, the winds were probably about, what, 18 to 22 miles an hour? Yep. Um, Gust to 25. The tent says it can withstand winds up to 35 miles an hour. They lie. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, the ground was soft. Yeah, that's true. We'd gotten quite a bit of rain. Yeah, the, the, so the, the stakes weren't holding. I mean, they... My bad, not going out and, you know, getting real stakes. They give you them little bitty pencil stakes about yay long with a hook on it, you know. And the ground, it's been raining here for the last week, so the yeah. ground is soft. Yeah. And when we got here, I could pound them in and I'd get about that much bite. And then it was, it was done with. The wind just popped them. The, the corners back, you know, underneath. The wind just got underneath and... Yeah. Popped it up. So it's, you know, it may stand up, just, but when the ground is soaked, them stakes ain't staying in the ground. Those stakes that we have. Right. So, and of course, by the time we got in here, everything we owned was soaking wet. Yeah. So, uh, so every everything's spread eagle in here. <laughs> yeah, we, we just strung everything out to let it all dry. This morning, everything's good and dry. So uh, we're looking at really heavy winds on the road today. So we're going to try and get everything packed and get out of here before they kick up too bad. Yeah, they're calm and they're coming right out of the way we're going. So, so we're going to be bucking wind all day. Yeah. So off to off to Big Bend National Park today, finally. Uh, got the new tire on the bike, which is good. That's what we've been sitting here waiting for. And uh, <laughs> so burn some of that new rubber off today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to get while it's cold. What's wrong? Oh, oh, did dad go off and leave you? Yeah, oh, that make you sad. Well, good morning, everybody. We have made it to our next campground. We are at the Cottonwood Campground in Big Bend National Park. And uh, we had some choices to make. And we didn't film our ride here because we knew once we got here, we'd have no electricity. So we chose to save our batteries until we got into the park so we could go ahead and film what we see in the park and show it to you guys. That and it was the windiest ride ever getting here. So it's probably a good thing we didn't have cameras going. You would have heard some naughty words. And you're only gonna have one camera, hers. Yeah, because- You guys will already know if you done watched the last video. <laughs> yeah. 
because we lost the GoPro that goes to his bike. So mm. we are um, trying to figure out how to get that replaced. Yeah. It won't be till we get back towards civilization, but. No. But this has been great. Cottonwood Campground is the most remote campground in Big Bend National Park. And um, it's on the west side of the park. And um, it has been great. It's quiet. They're doing some work right now, putting in some new campsites, but it's, it's a small campground. Mm. You're not getting in here with a big RV. Maybe a 25 foot pole trailer and vans, mm -hmm. class C, class B, mm -hmm. or a tent. Yeah, yeah. Reservations only. Yeah. It used to be non-reservation, just come first come, first serve, but now it's reservation. Mm -hmm. There's uh, no, uh, no utilities at the campsites. They have some water stanchions that are non-potable water. You can do your dishes and so forth. And then up at the front, they have a filtered water uh, stanchion that you can get drinking water from, and they have vault toilets, mm -hmm. but that's it. Yeah. And, um, but it's been very pleasant, very pleasant, mm -hmm. nice and quiet, crystal clear skies, warm. Oh man, has it been warm? 80 during the day, but it was 27 last night. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little cold. 30 the night before, 27 tonight, uh -huh. but 80 during the day. Yeah, and I'll take the 80. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like a what do you call a lizard? He's like a lizard on a hot rock. <laughs> And it's at night. This is an international dark sky park. And oh, oh. this is considered to be the darkest place in all of Texas. And the first night we were here, I went out about three o'clock in the morning to use the restroom. And all he heard as I walked out was, wow, because the night sky here is spectacular. Yep, it is. Reminds me of growing up. Millions of stars and they're crystal clear. There's a constellation that shows up behind the tent and it looks like the tail of it comes right down to the earth right behind the tent it's the neatest looking thing out in the middle of nowhere i'll guarantee you that mm -hmm. they do have a camp store about well they say half a mile but we we paced it yesterday because we walked it it's a mile each way from the campground to the door of the store that's right up the road there and goes the government lying to you again <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they, we've been able to get food there. They have food, water, ice, snacks. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get a full-on three-course meal there. You know, you're going to get mm -hmm. trail food. But enough to make do. It's been yeah. feeding us for the last couple of days. Enough to pat. And um, It's all right. Leave it alone. It's a bee. So today we're going to go out and explore a little bit. Uh, we're going to ride up the road. There's a scenic overlook that's supposed to be really cool about eight miles out this road and then there is an old road that goes between there and the highway further north of us i think we're going to try that out and see how that goes and if that goes well then we may head into the little town of terlinga for some mexican food for lunch mm. yeah so yeah we're gonna get going and uh, uh we won't be able to do trails walking trails because dogs are not allowed right um we can only we can only go to places where she's allowed, which is pretty much developed areas, developed campgrounds, parking lots, and that type of thing. Yeah. Overlooks, but no uh, no hiking trails for us with the dog. Nope. You know what that means? I'm getting ice cream whether you like it or not. <laughs> and yes, he got his ice cream for walking to the store yesterday. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Okay, we're gonna take off now labor.
Well, this is our first stop for the day. Bubba was already out here yesterday doing his exploring. Okay, guys, we're at the Rio Grande. I'm going to turn, ooh, pan real slow. The Rio Grande, check it out. Somebody's down there getting loaded up in a boat right now. Look like they're going fishing. But yeah, it's the Rio Grande. Cat wanted to stay back, so I'm out doing what I can do, videoing. Pretty cool here. Some serious cliffs right there. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but we'll spin you around and show you more of them. Them are tall. Flies, they're terrible. Uh, so I was gonna take that little road down Asphalt Road, but this road that I'm on now This will take you into Don't even ask me how to pronounce it. Uh, I've been struggling with that town For so long, but they say off-road vehicles um, I Don't see this is not bad truthfully I mean, I've seen cars going down it, so how far they've gone, I don't know. I don't know how far they've gone. But let me turn the camera around and show you the map. Okay, let's see here. We are staying right here at Cottonwood. Where's my, right here. We're staying there, and I took this road Right, right there, that little dotted one. I've still got to go back down to this picnic area. But that little dotted one, it will take you all the way up. To that town right there. We've been in that town before. So that's a, it's like 13 miles, I guess. So anyway, I'm going to head back down this road right here. It's not bad. It's not a bad road. It's not a bad road at all. Um, a little bumpy, washboardy. Sorry, doing the old Montana wave here, keeping the flies out of my face. And I'm going to go down back, back down there to where that wo that road ends. And that's the end of the road. So I'll see you guys down there. Uh, this is the canyon I was telling you guys about. I'll swing you around here. You got a trail that goes up in there. How far it goes in there, I don't know. Probably read. We'll walk over and see how, how far it goes in. One point six mile round trip, eighty foot elevation. I don't know how far this stuff goes, but I don't know. Might have to go back and get Cat and bring her back up in here. Yeah, what a pretty cool spot. That's a low hanging tree right there. Oh yeah, you got people up there. Oops, let me zoom you in here. I'm not dressed for hiking. I don't have my hiking shoes. I'm just out exploring today. But there's a cabin, canyon. 
it's pretty cool actually it's a pretty cool little area I know I'm not much on narrating but y'all can see you don't have to listen to me you can just look <laughs> all right I'm gonna get back down the road there's a couple more places I want to look at Yeah. But um, this is the Santa Elena Canyon Overlook. It's an eight mile ride from the campground and it's the end of the road. It's the end of the scenic road. Um, there's a trail you can take that actually goes up into the canyon. It's supposed to be, it sounds a lot like the gateway to the Narrows hike in Zion where you can actually hike up along the Rio Grande River and up through the canyon. And uh, of course, as you're hiking along, you're in the US and then you've got Mexico right on the other side of you on the other side of the river. So it's kind of cool. It's, Amazing. I don't know if the camera is going to do this justice, but it's almost overwhelming riding up to it. The, the um, enormity of these bluffs, they're just huge. They're massive. It's pretty incredible. That's all I got to say about it. I already <laughs> told you yesterday. I already told you. All right, well, I was wrong. The overlook at the top was not the end of the road. Go about another three quarters of a mile to a mile and you get down in the bottom here. And this is where the trail begins that takes you up the river. So I'm gonna walk up this trail just a little bit and see if I can get a good shot of the canyon here because this is spectacular from down here. These cliffs are crazy huge, really beautiful. So this was a short little, just a couple tenths of a mile, and you get right down here, right on the Rio Grande. I mean, you could step right into it. And wow, what a view from here. This is spectacular. You can see the canyon behind me. You have to do some rock scrambling up there to get to the trail. And then they say, once you get to the other side of that, it levels out and is pretty, pretty even trail. They said that first, that first little bit is a little interesting though, but man, well worth coming out to see this. This is amazing.
So we found this neat little structure on the side of the road and figured we'd stop and check it out real quick and see what it is. And it's called Luna's Jackal. And it says Gilberto Luna raised a large family here. And uh, this little structure, it's called a jackal. And um, it says he lived here until he died in 1947 at the age of 108. Desert living must have been very good to him. This, this is neat. Yeah, she... Ooh. Yeah. You definitely have to watch your head coming in here. It's only about three and a half feet high at the tallest point. Um, but it, it said on the plaque, notice the difference in temperature when you come in here, it's all built out of mud and rock and so forth. And it is, it's noticeably cooler in here than it is out there. So it's, it's 82 degrees outside and it's probably, what, another 10 degrees cooler in here? About, yeah, about 10 degrees cooler in here.
All right, we made it 13 miles up Old Miller Ranch Road and uh, hit, now we're in uh, Terlinga Ghost Town. And uh, we're gonna hit this little Mexican cantina that we ate at last year when we were in this area. So, yay, looking forward to some good Mexican food. I am. Yes. I'm getting anything, you've already had chips. You already had your fair share. Oh yeah, this is just what we needed right here. This is good stuff. He's got fajitas, I've got chicken enchiladas. The dog wants some of her own. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Well, that was a delicious lunch. Nice little stop. And uh, while we're stopped here, I'm gonna take the map out and show you where we went today real quick. And then from here, it's back on the bikes, off to get fuel. And then we're gonna head back the way we came. So hopefully y'all can see this. So here is Cottonwood. That's our little campground we're staying at. We rode this road eight miles up here to the overlook and then down to the bottom part by the river. And then came back up and then this is that old Maverick Road. 13 miles of dirt that we took up to Maverick Junction and then into Terlinga. So um, total, maybe 30 miles total, if that. And we're gonna go back the way we just came. All right, they look like they're packed up. Ready to head back? Ready to go. Good lunch? Good one. Mm -hmm. Good ride? Good ride. All right. <laughs>